Lab Guy here. Tonight I'm going to show you how to take a complex connector and create a template from it if you're lacking the mechanical diagram, which I was, and uh, create that template yourself and then punch the correct holes into a uh, project box to hold that connector and I'll show you how I did this on a fairly complex, not hideously complex, but a fairly complex connector and that would be the red, green, and blue jack that I used on the tiny televisor. I bought these on eBay because it has the red, green, and blue and the yellow because my color big televisor takes um, composite video as the sync input for the for the NIPCOW disk and then red, green, and blue video. Now you've heard me talk about my Aurora World Converter on occasion and that is this guy right here it's not very big but it is very expensive and they don't make them anymore on the back is that a right side up? No. on the back is the jack diagram and uh, you can freeze frame here and look that over this uh, has multiple inputs and multiple outputs. This converter will take standard definition video, NTSC, PAL, or CCAM, and convert it to, I'll say two dozen, that's in the ballpark, two dozen obsolete video formats, as well as having an agile RF modulator to create the television channels, frequencies, and modulation schemes as they existed in the late 1920s, the 1930s, the 40s, 50s, and on. So it, uh, it will output a multitude of mechanical standards from below 30 lines, I believe. I'm not, I'm not going to look at the manual right now. And up to, I believe, 60 or even 90 line or more, I, again, I'm not going to look in the manual, mechanical standards. It also does obsolete electronic standards. Uh, 343 line pre-war television. Four, I, I don't know if it does 405 line. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, it does, it, it does those, those odd formats. And this device was intended for uh, antique television restorers to reproduce the exact signals that those antique televisions would require. Imagine you found yourself in possession of a CBS color wheel based color television. This box will generate the 405 line, 144 field per second, 6 to 1 interlaced color fields signal for that television and two or three other field sequential format signals. Uh, one by Dumont and one by General Electric for certain. So quite a versatile box. When they were in production, these sold for $1,050, or at least the, the last run that the fellow did was I paid $1,050 for this. and. I would have paid more. This is what makes my projects and my videos possible. Now I know this causes consternation for many of my viewers because they don't have one. It's not in production. The people who have them probably won't part with them. And you can't buy them. You just can't you cannot get one even if you have that kind of money and it's outside the budget of many enthusiasts versus the kinds of people 
who do have the money to buy these things. So I bit the bullet. This thing hurt when I bought it. This is this is when I spend a thousand dollars for something. It's something that I feel I desperately need. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that you're talking to the cheapest guy in town. But if I have to, I can spend money. But enough about the price of this. Let me define the problem I have. Uh, I built the big televisor. It has this connector on the back, which has RGB, luminance, and right and left audio. We d we're not using audio, so we don't care about those two. They're, they're floaters. And up to a point, my mechanical televisor had this cable coming out of the back of the world converter that plugs into one of these little mini DIN jacks and it is the one for mechanical television output and it originally terminated into a six pin single row uh, female connector which plugged directly onto the illuminator box on the on the big televisor and with the new rebuild the finalization of the big televisor it uses this jack on the back so that cable didn't break out into RCA plugs and so I did use the six pin portion of it uh, to build the interconnect cable from the illuminator box to the main board of the televisor so having cut that end off and this I made this cable quite long and having cut that end off I went ahead and soldered soldered the wires to one of these and then I just use this cute shorty that I bought on eBay from England you can't get them anywhere else triple RCA cable I, I really wish they'd make these in red green and blue but it's okay so the red green and blue comes in on this and the luminance comes in on one more RCA cable from the world converter that's, that's this one so that was how it was hooked up I finished the big televisor today it has its own built-in power supply now it has the input jacks proper input jacks um, everything's unified on the chassis it is a freestanding color televisor uh, in the future I will fix it so that it can receive the black and white signal and there will be a selector switch to select for that and we'll use the color illuminator and I'll simply adapt the incoming color signals to um, or I mean the black and white signal into fake RGB to drive all three channels in black and white so it will be capable of, of playing uh, NBTV in black and a single cable black and white or four cable color so in the meantime though this works okay I don't want this to accidentally go across a screwdriver and short out possibly damage the outputs of my world converter which is impossible to replace probably very difficult to get get the fellow to repair it if I broke it he's pretty much done with them I, I believe he, he may even be retired I don't know so I want to build this into a box well there it is it turns out those jacks and this this whole unit is metric so the distance from one jack to the next either horizontally or vertically turns out to be 14 millimeters well working here in the states in inches and inches and pounds and and not in cubits and spans we have a problem so fortunately my scientific rule has both American uh, imperial standards and metric so I was able to measure the center to center distance on those and the distance to the two mounting holes in the center and what I did was I transferred this to graph paper and made a drawing 
of it, or at least the placement of the, the jacks. This graph paper, just by coincidence, I didn't realize it at the time I was drawing, is metric. Two squares on here is one centimeter. So what, what I ended up with was a five times scaled drawing perfectly to scale by accident. So I put it on my flatbed scanner and scanned it at 300 dots to the inch into paint shop. I took that image and made a copy of it. I saved it of course and I, I called it the the jack panel uh, jack panel uh, underscore raw that was the raw scan then I made a copy of it in paint shop and I divided the horizontal pixel size and the vertical pixel size by five and went from let's see what I came up with uh, originally the original eight and a half by eleven inch scan roughly uh, um, was 2,550 pixels wide by 3,300 scan lines high. When I scaled it, I took those two numbers and divided each one by five, and the horizontal became 650 uh, 649.6, or 650, and the vertical was 508. I then took that drawing and saved it as the scaled image actual size at 300 pixels per inch it's now at actual size and that if it's printed out at 300 pixels per inch that drawing would be that big and indeed it was <laughs> and so in rehearsal for this, what we're about to do, I took that stencil and taped it to a small piece of aluminum equivalent to this, but smaller. This box was what I was planning on using, but it's just too darn big to waste. I mean, that, that's just ridiculous. I could put two of these in here, maybe even three of them in here, so I don't want to waste this box. So, I got the scrap piece of aluminum, which already had a couple of holes drilled in it, but that doesn't matter. And I did the full dress rehearsal for making this. And it was simply a matter of taping the uh, stencil on there, punching it with the uh, power punch, the center punch, to mark the centers of the holes, and then drilling them to size. And when I got done, much to my delight, Nailed it! <laughs> Needless to say, there was a happy dance involved. And so, we're now going to duplicate this on the project box I've chosen for tonight's project. We know that the stencil works. So, I went to Anchor Electronics today in Santa Clara. Spent a whole bunch of money, about 50 bucks. And I bought some project boxes of various sizes because I needed to dry fit them and see. And uh, the first one we'll look at is the LMB number P101. It's apparently it's uh, two and a half by three inches and it's one inch thick. Will our jacks fit inside this? Yep, they will. Still kind of roomy, kind of roomy. That's a nice box. That was a nine-dollar box. Uh, this is not a cheap hobby if you go out buying everything. So they did have one size smaller available, and it's the LMB P100, and it is one and a half inches by two and a quarter inches, and it is three-quarters of an inch thick. Now, 
I saw that and I had one of these with me but you know when you're looking at a plastic box you see the two screw holes you know that there's going to be posts inside so the question becomes will that fit inside because this is an interference problem and so I tried it and all I can say is if it fit any better I would start crying so I'm going to mount that jack into this box tonight and it will center up uh, it's having a little trouble getting exactly to the vertical center because of the pins on the bottom but we can trim those off we can shorten those and I'm going to have the wires enter from the side and that will be our our breakout box with the uh, with the mini DIN plug at one end of the cable and this guy equivalent to this in here and I'm going to see there's two thicknesses here I'm going to drill the holes in this piece so that's how this is going to work um, I'm going to reuse the stencil that I used because this is plastic and I don't want to hit it with the power punch and have it explode into several pieces so we're going to reuse the same stencil with uh, little preparatory work first in that I want to uh, put two center lines on it so that I can center it perfectly on that box so I'm going to do that now and get this ready to go so currently the um, drawing itself does not have a center line so I'm going to add one to it I'm having trouble picking up these little steel rules these straight edges because they they stick to the table nice which means they're not bent <laughs> all right so let's first get our our uh, alignment cross onto the drawing which um, we'll have a we'll take to camera two so that you can see this and uh, essentially since I, I punched this I've got all the holes in there and I can uh, line up on the holes that already exist so uh, we'll go right across this thing like this it's the edges where it matters and then for the center I go across the centers of the two center center punched holes and so now we have this marked with the centering marks so now we have to do the same thing to the box and it has soft edges because it's it's rounded. We'll do our best to find the centers on these things. And um, we will switch to inches since the box is in inches. And we'll put our center marks and hope for the best. Alright, it says it's two and a quarter. Two and a quarter, you say. So one and an eighth is our center mark. Let's hope that we stay lined up good enough for this. One and an eighth. <clears throat> That's probably good enough. And then we need to do the, uh, the other direction. I'm not going to draw all over it. Hopefully we can clean the writing off with alcohol when I'm done. And it is an inch and a half, which means our center mark is at three quarters. Hope 
hopefully it's close enough I mean you know Here we go. that'll do hopefully those stick out from under the template and I'm sure they do and that will allow us to line up our template on here and make our marks here we go that in down I can't see this other mark I'm going to have to go with, with one there we go it kind of lines up with the marks it's uh, within the width of the pen so we'll call that good now I'm going to mark the eight spots where I will be drilling. Maybe. Get the pen to flow. There we go. And uh, this is uh, probably going to be pretty straightforward. There we go, they're, they're marked. And uh, let's uh, take this off and see how, how it looks. Those are our marks. Time to get the drill bits and we will pre-drill all the holes with the small bit that drills the two center holes. These, these two lower holes down here were in the, already in this piece of metal. Okay, so we want starter holes and number four hardware fits that and a 764 bit is the size for that. But I think I want to put the smallest starter holes I can make to get that lined up. So I'm going to use a 5 64ths bit for the starter holes. By drilling small starter holes, later when we drill the larger holes, I'll probably drill them out in two and even maybe three steps to get to the size of the jacks which, as I recall, are, require a 10 millimeter hole in that range, 10 or 11 millimeters each. So we'll start with the smallest hole. <laughs> Let's drill this turd. Name this guy Curly. All right, so clean that off. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's looking good inside as well. No damage done. Always got drill shavings everywhere here. Okay. So. Yeah. I don't always keep my work work surface clean, but in this case, I think it's a good idea. So now, I'm going to drill out the six outer holes, and I'm going to drill them to quarter inch. And I think that we should, <laughs> sorry about that, switch to the vise. We're going to switch to the bench vise to hold this. because the when I get to the big bit, I don't know, do I drill all the way up? This is my biggest bit. That's right. Okay, my biggest bit, which is a whopping three-eighths of an inch, isn't quite big enough. And my step bit is too big and dangerous to use. But I do have a nice tapered rotary file that works great. Alrighty then. We've got the vise. So hopefully it'll open that far. Sure. No more. Ah! Oh, great. It falls all the way through. Okay. Yeah. I just don't want the, um, I don't want the bit twisting the box out of my hand and biting me. All right. So let's move the other camera now. Okay, we're in the vise, and I'm going to first drill up to a quarter inch. And let's hope we don't slip or the box doesn't pop out. Yeah, drill into your fingers, Rich. Okay, that box is moving. We don't want that. I just bought a new roll of gaffer's tape. All right, we'll put some of this on the jaws of the vise to act as a grip. Let's try this again. Let's see if that holds better. Okay, it's not level. I want to drill square. There we go. Let's try again. put a garbage can beneath the uh, the workspace here. That's one. That's two. Oh, OK. 
Okay. Apparently I struck the uh, threaded screw in the vise. Okay. Oh, that sounds terrible. Oh, we're through this. And I'm covered in plastic shavings. Good. That means we're making progress. All righty then. We shift to the bigger bit. And I don't know. Should I go all the way? All the way up? Uh, I don't know. Will that be centered enough? Let's find out. Oh yeah! Wow! See that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Is this this will grab your your work and fling it. That's why I didn't want to hold it in my bare hands. Let's try it again. Okay, first thing, fat bit. Low speed. Ah! All right. That's terrifying. Okay. Golly. That's brutal. But it's getting there. Oh! All right, I got to answer my phone. All right, so these holes are now drilled, and um, we'll try them for for fit here in a moment. Let's see. Here we go. We got one of these, and we'll see if they fit. Oh, my my! Let's see if it fits on the inside. That's the key. All right, so we have interference from the pins on the bottom. So that's okay, we'll just fold those over. It's no big deal, I'm just gonna solder flat to them anyways. Like this. I think that, that might be enough. No? Who's interfering? Oh dear. Are you kidding me? Oh, well, that's interesting. It goes in one way, but not the other. We're not quite done. I want to enlarge those hole. I want to enlarge those holes just a little. We're not quite done, but that's very close. That's very good. Um, let me think. Let me think, uh, what else? Um, plastic things to cut off. And we can fold these over as well. I think we'll be okay. There we go. fits that way. Now can I turn it around and fit it the other way? It will not fit the other way. That's interesting. All right, fortunately, here, fortunately, the left right center mark is just far enough off that I got lucky. If I had centered this, I don't think it would have fit. For some reason, yeah, you can see this side has a notch cut in it, and this side does not. And it's 
there is interference with the posts and these holes by accident are offset just enough. Notice that they are shifted to your right. They're closer to the right side than to the left. And we got lucky. <laughs> so, it does go in. It fits between the posts. What can I say? Oh yes, nailed it! So let's let's enlarge those holes just a little. Give us some room around them for the uh, for the shield of the connectors to uh, fit in there. And this will be will be ready to begin uh, assembly. We have to drill one more hole in the, in one side or the other, which will determine after we assemble it. So rotary file, please. Okay. A rotary file. This is how I keep my teeth sharp. It works really good. Honest. You should try it. Well, that's not bad. What it does, it takes that asymmetry caused by the bit biting in and makes the, the holes round. They're nice and round now. And we'll just touch it up from the inside and call it good. Ooh, don't do that. It's trying to grab. cups full of uh, shavings. If I blew in it, they up my face. Up his nose. Okay, there we go. We're done with my vice. I have many vices. <laughs> okay, I only have this one now. I used to have many vices. Then I got old. Okay, well, looking at this, I can see that I was just going to drill a hole right through the end, and it would have nailed that post. <laughs> I, I'm a symmetry freak. I have to drill in the center without thinking. Getting lucky tonight. Usually, I'm a lot like uh, Curly. Hey, Mo! I tried to think, and nothing happened. And, uh, this time, something happened. I'm not sure what it was. We'll take it. Oh, it's, I guess I'm not in, the, in the, this camera view. Uh, it's, I gotta fire my camera, man. Okay, there's, a, there's some little bit of uh, flash in there that I'm gonna just whittle off. Oh yeah. Then we have to clean, clean off the um, the marks and drill out the screw holes and drill the hole for the wires. So we're almost there. This is going very, very quickly. It'll be even quicker for you after I edit this. <laughs> There we go. Well, maybe yeah. it won't matter. So we we'll just drill out these these two holes. That's where our mounting screws will go next. Now as we know this only goes one way. Okay. All righty. Now looking at this. The connections are down here. 
so our entry hole for our wires will be on the lower half um, and now we have to figure out should it be the left side or the right side and I don't think it matters uh, yeah. I guess I'll come in this side here uh, we're going to make them work think we want it low down it's going to be low down okay there's our mark and figure out how big our wires are so we have the twisted wires to go in there so we'll see what quarter inch that looks a little too big Uh, let's try three sixteenths. Uh, three, three sixteenths. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's not, not a critical, not a critical thing. If this was a metal box, I would be drilling a much larger hole and putting in a rubber grommet. I have a kit of those as well. The dentist will see you now. That's as beautiful as beautiful. chips. We'll use some uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean off the, uh, the ink. All right, we can back you up a little bit there. I'll show you another, another tip that I developed. When you buy this stuff, when you open the bottle, don't leave it open. Two things. It evaporates immediately and it absorbs water from the air and so it's no longer 99 percent alcohol or whatever whatever rating it is I, I don't it's of no consequence to me since I don't plan to drink it and um, so what I do when you open this when it's new it's got a foil foil seal on it right and so what I've done is I've just poked a pinhole in the foil seal just a pinhole and that cuts the evaporation way down and I can apply the stuff in drops instead of having it all pour out and go everywhere so that's your that's your uh, alcohol cleaning alcohol tip of the day cap immediately all right it'll either clean off or it won't and the alcohol will either eat this plastic alive, or it won't. And it didn't. Oh, that is... A thing of beauty. Oh. So I've got it the wrong way around for you. Okay, this way. There's our little entry hole. There we go. Alrighty then. That's good. That's clean. I like to keep my projects clean these days. I don't know why. That wasn't always the case. <laughs> when dumpster diving is your religion. But now, of course, I don't have any mounting screws ready. And for this, because it's going to tap into this sheet metal this thing's made out of. See, it's sheet metal over plastic. I use stainless steel because uh, an aluminum screw will cut its way through there, but it chews it up really good. And um, we will be putting putting it in and taking it out a couple of times before we're done. Now, do 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 do. 
Do you, oh yes. Oh, these are not aluminum. These are these are zinc plated steel. Well, heck, I didn't know that. I thought they were aluminum. Aluminum don't stick to no magnet. Doesn't. Wontent. Something. I don't know. All right. It uh. It fits. Okay, let's see if we can plug into it. That one likes it. That one likes it. Oh yeah. And it's not this this plug is is not right. It's the uh, outer flanges are flared up on it, but it's doing okay. It's fine, we have a connection. So check that out. That looks like it was made in the factory. All right, so in typical lab guy fashion, of course, we have to take it apart again now and uh, solder the wires. So, sadly, sadly, well, this, only, this will only break out red, green, and blue. So yellow, white, and red on the top row don't do anything. They're not used. But that'll be our secret. There we go. There we go. So now we take the previous one and remove the wires. We should be hot enough for that. Oh, come on, let go. There we go. You know, when I tried to put them on, they wouldn't stay on. Now I'm trying to take them off, and they won't come off. No, we don't want to go. Okay. There. There we go. And we'll keep this one for later. I bought ten of these on eBay. I think ten bucks. The way I'm going, well, I'm going to use one on Eleanor. On Eleanor RGBY. The 10-4. Okay, that's ready. Now, don't solder these onto here before we put them into here. Ah. There we go. Oh, like it was made to go in there, huh? Okay. And the heat shrink just won't go in. That's amazing. I was hoping the heat shrink won't go in there. Then I want to drill it just a little bigger. That's the one that drilled it. So we're going to make that hole just a little bigger. Bear with me. Because I want the heat, I want to put heat shrink where the wire passes through there as strain relief. Yeah. Let's try that. Still being difficult. I don't know why. There it goes. Okay. Like that. We want some we want some of the heat shrink on the inside. Okay, so that works. <laughs> and he pulls it all the way out. Oh, it's just like him. I don't know. Put it in, pull it out, put it in, pull it out. Oh, make up your mind. <laughs> don't quit your day job, Rich. Okay, we'll untangle these. Now, now. 
What am I forgetting? Heat shrink! I want the heat shrink in there for strain relief. And I forgot to put it on the cable. And let's see, I think we'll go with no pigment. And we'll take take it from there. That's probably too small. Can I get that in there? Will that fit? I want to use the smallest size heat shrink possible. Okay, that goes. So what do we need? Like an inch? Okay. That's one inch, three thirty seconds, three thirty seconds uh, heat shrink. Okay. If you think this video is too long, realize that I I've edited it down, and you haven't been through what I've been through to get to this point. It fits. All righty then. Now back through that hole again for the what fifth, sixth, seventh time. All right, we're good. We're good. Now we need the black and the green, the black and the blue. The day I made this cable, I didn't have any any blue. I used purple or violet. Violet is the correct correct name for this color. And we have to retwist these and oh yes. Okay, red will be our longest one. All right. I don't know. Can we can you see that? Okay. See the red comes to this jack to the uh, to the farthest from that hole. Green is next. No. Oh god. Okay, it's red, blue, and green. I mentioned before that's not, that's just not right. Okay, so let's hook up red first, and that'll be easy enough. Ah, here we go. Get on with it, lab guy. Alrighty, I'll do that. That's blue and brown. Green and ground. Right? Yep. Okay. Alrighty then. And we will attach the red signal right now. Yeah. Which is, of course, that's fine. going to go here. <coughs> Always tin our wires first. Sure, he's twisted nice and tight. I don't want to burn the red wire when I solder this. Good. Oh, 
sure. He's in. And next is green. Which we want to retwist. And cut. Alrighty. Twist it again. Twist it up. Nice, nice and tight. And we're ready to go. Come on. We're going to fix that like that. other wires out of the way and just attach the green I go underneath there we go wow we are hooked up green blue red and the upper yes sir that is how it's hooked up it's hard to see but they're hooked up now we have to pull our wires back. Gotta make sure I stay in the in the camera so you can see. Alright. Then we'll tighten our screws. That one doesn't want to start. There we go. If they're a little too tight, you can drill your case holes a little tiny bit larger so the screw can move around. But um, we're in tolerance here. Oh boy. Gotta twist it. I want to make sure that bundle's nice and tight when I shrink the tubing. And to make sure it'll go through the hole, gotta get in there. There it goes. There. It's in. Not sure you're getting enough light to see that, but there you go. That's it. tool for every job. It's taken me a long time to accumulate all these tools. Tubing is shrunk, the wires are attached, the jacks are mounted, and we need our case screws. We need to untwist this, it's all bound up. All right, so we can put the back on. Okay. 
and now I have a much more convenient way of getting the signals out of the world converter instead of through one of these mini DIN connectors which are a bear to solder and so on. In fact this one does not have the outer shell installed because the wires were too fat. I did not have any wire thinner than that to do the job that day so this is how it came out. So that's just the way it is. The thing's a bit dusty. It was in a box for a very long time. I'll clean her up. And I'm going to fix this nakedness with a bit of heat shrink because um, it'll help uh, hold this together and prevent shorting as well. So back to the heat shrink. And that is a size I probably don't have that will fit. Do I? Oh, just barely. Will it? It will. Okay. Well, what do you know? It says it's three eighths. Three eighths of an inch. Now, if I can just get in there and pull this thing through, I don't want to hurt it. There we go. And we will pull it up to it right there, like that. I won't call that professional quality, but I will call it better than it was. So, so that's how I make a mini DIN to, to three RCA jack adapter. The luminance signal, the yellow jack, uh, actually uses its own its own video cable. I don't have a yellow one just now, but I'll find one. So, in part two, I'll show you the completed big televisor. It has uh, a lot of improvements. It's uh, much more highly polished. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you come and watch my videos, and I really, really appreciate you. We're rapidly reaching very close to uh, 2,500 subscribers. That's for a channel this dumb? Really? Thanks! You guys all rock! I really appreciate it. And I have, a, I have about 130 very faithful viewers that within about a five day period will make it around to view the videos. And I want to thank all of you an extra bit and ask the others when they finally come and watch one of my videos to uh, watch more often. It's good for you. It's full of vitamins or something. So, until next time, Lab Guy out.